This circuit is very close to the final burglar alarm circuit. Now the part, the circuit shown in white is from the previous video. The circuits shown in yellow are new circuits. And a few things I should point out. I gave a value to this capacitor, this capacitor used in a trigger circuit. I gave it 220 picofarad. And that forms a time constant with this 1K resistor. So it gives me a time constant of about 220 nanoseconds, which should be more than enough to get this PNP turned on when this switch is closed by the intruder. So to recap, when this switch is closed, it fires this latch circuit, this NPN, this PNP. And here I have a timing circuit that after about 60 seconds, it turns off the alarm. Now notice that to the right I've added an alarm and I've added a bipolar NPN transistor to drive the alarm to ground when the latch fires. So when the PNP transistor conducts, the voltage at the top of RB will be about 5.8 volts or so. And the drop across the base emitter junction, approximately 0.7 volts. So notice that I added a 1 ohm resistor and a 10 microfarad capacitor here. Now the reason I did that is suppose that you applied the, the, the power, the battery, instantaneously. You connected the battery to this circuit. Now this PNP transistor is concerned that it might get triggered to turn on. And so if I apply power very rapidly, this voltage is going to ramp up really quick. And that voltage changing could be enough to trigger the latch. So when I apply the battery, I don't want the latch to fire. I don't want the alarm to sound and my neighbors to get upset. And consider that at the base of this PNP transistor, I drew a little capacitor in red. And this is a, a stray capacitor that could exist in the circuit. And it could be very small. It could be a few picofarads. But if this emitter on this PNP changes voltage very rapidly, I could get a little base emitter current that would flow through this parasitic capacitor. And that alone could be enough to trigger the latch. So I wanted to make sure the supply could not change instantly at this point. So I put in a little RC filter circuit, which will give me about 10 micro second time constant. And this one ohm is very small and it shouldn't affect the circuit too much. Now I need to determine a value for the resistor RB to complete my circuit. And this siren is specced at 200 milliamps. And I found a NPN transistor that should be a heavy duty transistor. It'd be enough to drive this siren and it has a beta min of 50. And I may want to over design this siren circuit a little bit. I'm going to design it for 300 milliamps instead of the 200 milliamps. And that's in case in the future I want to add a different siren. I have a little design margin. So since the beta min is 50, I can calculate the base current that I need to drive this NPN into saturation. And so if I divide 300 milliamps by 50, I get the base current, which is 6 milliamps. So now I can design RB. So when this latch fires, the voltage across RB is 5.8 minus 0.7. And the current that I want in RB is 6 milliamps. So this is Ohm's law for resistance, which is voltage divided by current. 
So if I solve that, I get about 850 ohms. So I may want to go actually a little lower than 850 ohms. I think I'm going to select a standard value, 680 ohms. And that will give me even a little extra drive. And that will be probably a little safe. So I think this circuit is pretty much designed. But normally I would do another round of circuit design. And I might tweak a few components and optimize the circuit a little better. One thing I might optimize, I might want to decrease this 47K a little bit. So I was getting kind of close to running out of enough current to satisfy beta in this NPN transistor. And so I might want to reduce this 47K a little bit. I might want to increase the capacitance correspondingly to keep my delay time the same. But So th this is maybe not the final circuit, but it should be pretty close. And the purpose of this circuit is to give you an overview of bipolar circuit design. And if you understand most of the circuit design, you're really on your way to understanding bipolar circuit design.